Hi, Mom. Please don't blame yourself. You're really good at that. Truth is, half of me is always fighting the other half, and I never feel whole. I'm always hating some part of myself. But ever since you guys divorced, I'm really not sure what half I should be. The fact is, I can't be anything but what I am. A combination of both of you. Nothing can ever change that. <gasps> I love you both, though I felt for a long time that I couldn't or shouldn't love you because dad would get upset. No matter how hard I tried, one of you was always disappointed. Nobody understands how painful it is to turn off half my heart, but still miss you in silence. I hated myself for mistreating you when you were so loving. I'm sorry for the pain I have caused you. Dad and the rest of the family. Luke 18, 16 says, Jesus sent for them saying, let the little children come to me and do not keep them away for such is the kingdom of heaven. <gasps> why God, why did you take her away from me? Why? your students and God knows okay, enough I had enough of this you're the one that ran off with the lawyer what was his name Jack okay, Jacobs admit it just admit it right now what here we go again nothing is ever good enough for you you're a horrible husband and father yeah but I'm such a horrible husband and father what does that make you not in a million years even if we had a million years we wouldn't be able to work this out yeah well why try? We don't have a million years. And even if we did, I would never spend it here fighting with you like this! Don't walk away from me! I'm not finished with you! Don't you walk away from me! We're not finished yet! That's it. I'm done. I want a divorce. Late Night Movie Classics will return after the commercial break. Learn to dance from former champions Enyo Cordova and Terrell Jones at LA's premier dance studio and club. The calendar is filling up, so get off that couch and book your first lesson today. Your six glorious steps from escaping all your worries. Actually, you're six steps from a really hard workout. Book today at www.letsdancela.com. That's www.letsdancela.com. It's gonna be okay. This isn't my first time, right? I do this all the time. Hey, come here. Everything's gonna be okay, all right? I promise, I will always be your father, and I'll always be here for you, whether it's in this house or not. Okay, your mom and I, we just don't get along anymore. We're gonna make this work, I promise, okay? I love you guys so much. If you're going to leave, then leave. Now! Now! Get out! Go!
tired of trying to figure this all out. I just want it all to end. I know you tried your best. Love you. Mia. Padre Celestial, por favor, protégenos y perdónanos por todo el daño que están causando. Sorry to keep calling like this. I, uh, I know this is a difficult time, but we haven't seen you in church since, well, for several months, and I miss you at the welcome booth. We all do. Anyway, I don't mean to pester you. I know you need time to heal, but I think it would be good for you to join us again, when you're ready, of course. In the meantime, I'm sending you a text with a link to this great message from Pastor John. Please check it out. Hang in there. You are loved. Well, I'm sure you noticed by now that since you allowed God into your life, all your troubles have poof, gone away. Like that. <laughs> oh, come on. I must be in the wrong church. Really? Honestly, though, Life can really be hard, and sometimes seemingly devastating. Things that happen can even seem cruel. There are times when we feel like that life has tried to rob us, or tried to destroy us and the ones we love. And yet, God says he's come to give us an abundant life. Now, one of the ways that we can find this abundance that he's offering is if we embrace the very thing that brought us grief. There's not a human alive that's going to avoid the land of grief. We're all going to cross its borders at some point. Ecclesiastes 3.1 says, For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. There's a time to weep and a time to laugh. There's a time to mourn and there's a time to dance. can't escape that easily. <laughs> I forgot, I have to, um... Come join us. It's, it's just a mistake, I'm not ready. We won't bite. Well, at least I won't. And besides, you can't do any worse than that. Oh, you'd be surprised. I like surprises. Dancing is like therapy. You're so busy learning the steps, you don't have time to think of anything else. And it's a great workout. So come, join us. We go side and left, right, get ready, turn. Can 
and three, two, one, turn, and three. Don't forget the spot. Two, one, left, right, left, and three, two, one. I got to stand three, two, one. Keep your foot still. Don't let your foot move. Feel Keep up weight. and back. Keep the weight in. Next time, get ready. Here we go. All Turn. the way, all the way. Cross around the side. Right into the Snap it. And three, two, one. Here we, Here we go. go. All Cross the way around. Cross around the side. Get ready. Take it forward. Here we go. And left, right. Stay in rhythm. Left, right. Keep your arms up. Hey, buddy. You ready? Dad. Where's your sister? Um, you're a half hour late. <sighs> Hi, Monica. Where's Amanda? I really want to get going. They don't want to go with you. Shane. Sick of this crap. What was that? Get back over here. Shane, get back over here right now. All right, I'm not gonna put up with this for the third time in a row. What's going on here, Monica? We have shared custody. Hey, sweetie, get your stuff, you ready? Come on, let's go. This isn't right what you're doing. They don't wanna go with you. You can't force them, and it's clear they don't wanna go. I have a legal right. Oh God, what are you gonna do, call a cop? If I have to. Don't be ridiculous. Shane. I don't wanna go. All right. Go wash your hands. Dinner's almost ready. What kind of a loving father threatens to have his own children forcibly taken by the police? The man obviously needs help. Where were you? Where the hell were you when she needed you? When we needed you? How could you? Shane, your dinner's getting cold. I called you over an hour ago. Get to shut the door so you don't fall out Crash of it. Crash into people. Right. All right, here we go. Hit it, Oscar. Here we go. Dun, dun, ba. Dun, dun, ba. Get ready. And one, two, pivot. Pivot, pivot, side. Control uh, your side. Yeah, better, better, go. better. Wind up, go. Pivot, to the right. pivot, shut side. the door. All right. Left. Focus Wind up. Stop. To the right, to the right, to the right. Focus on the stop. There you go. That's better. Get ready. ready. To the right. Ready. To the right. And right. the other right. To the right. Here we go. Snap your head. Stop. Here we go. Remember, you got to focus. Come be tight. Don't fall back. Ooh. Don't fall back. Hold it. And right. There you go. Jump That's back it. in. Here we Wind go. Up. One, two, pivot. Pivot, pivot, side. This is Cameron. I'm afraid we're going to have to hold him for another couple of days for observation, maybe more. 
we have him on antidepressants. This will help stabilize him. But he needs a therapist, drug rehab, and an outpatient psychiatrist. Antidepressants? He experimented with opioids. Bad, yes. Stupid, yes. But it's not like he's clinically depressed. You know, a couple of weeks ago, another Bay Area hospital, who also had a patient on involuntary hold due to suicidal ideation, reported he used one of these to end his life. And that was in between 15-minute wellness checks. I can't impress upon you strong enough what occurred with Shane. He's in a very fragile state, severely depressed, and needs to be under constant supervision, at least till he stabilizes. Is that what you believe? Yes. I need to take him home today. I'm afraid he's going to have to stay, Mrs. Cameron. And you're going to have to find a very good therapist before I can release him. But it's past 72 hours. Please, just let me take home my son. He's under 18. I'm his mother. I can look after him. You get him a reputable therapist. Then I'll release him. Raquel, come on in. Thanks. Thank you. It's so good to see you. Thanks. You too. You know, you can you can take more time off from work if you need to. Everything okay? If you like talking about it. I just don't know if I could do this anymore. It takes time. I'll be okay. I know you will. Now there's a guy out there, I'll walk in. His name is Matt Cameron, high school teacher. Says he was referred to you. You feel up to seeing him? Sure. Thanks. Of course. I'm here anytime you need me, Raquel. Mr. Cameron. Hi, I'm Raquel. Matt. Yes. Please, have a seat. So, what brings you here today, Matt? My son Shane, he's, he's not right. He, um... Is he in danger? Tried to kill himself. Drug overdose. I am so sorry to hear that. The important thing is that he's alive. I had to find out from a neighbor. Can you believe that? A neighbor called me. I know how hard this is for you. So they will probably want to keep him a week. After that, they require a therapist be assigned to him for future follow-up treatments. That's why I'm here. You see, my ex and I couldn't agree on a therapist. And so the judge picked one for us, sort of randomly. And lo and behold, he picked you, which was amazing because you're the person that I wanted. Well, we can't legally do anything until I get the official notification from the court. It should be here in the next few days. A few days? My son needs help. And he'll get it. We need to wait for the paperwork to arrive. Look, 
I'm not sure I'm best suited to help you. I can recommend you to a colleague of mine, one of the very best, years more experienced than me. What? No. No, it has to be you. Why does it have to be me? I just know. Look, Matt, you have to understand the gravity of the situation. The gravity of the situation? Are you serious? You really don't... Why do you think I'm here? Sorry, poorly phrased. What I mean is, in you choosing me to be your therapist. I'm confident I made the right choice. I'm not so sure. A friend of mine recommended you. Someone I trust. And... And what? There are no atheists in foxholes. Excuse me? In war, when you're hunkered down in a foxhole, and the enemy is bearing down on you, you'd be hard-pressed to find someone who wasn't calling their maker. Are you a religious man? Not really. But a couple of days ago, for the first time in my life, I got down on my knees and I prayed for God to help me. My kids, especially Shane. And, and what? that day, a friend of mine, a colleague from school, gave me your card. I know you must be exhausted and in terrible pain, but there are life circumstances that may preclude me from being your best choice. I know. And I'm sorry. You know? That's why I'm here, Raquel. Who better to handle the case? Who better than someone that's been there deeper than me? Well, I... I... Oh, you'll do it, Raquel. Thank you so much. This means the world to me. You have no idea. I, I, I'm sorry. I can't. I'm sorry. That's okay. I, I understand. Not ready yet, huh? Look, I know you, Raquel. You're the best person for this job. Who knows who they'll land on next? He needs you. Thanks. You're welcome. Hello? Okay. So the first step is to sign some forms. And I'm gonna want to meet the mother. Raquel? You're in. Yeah. Um, so, again, I'm gonna want to meet the mother, Monica, and Shane, of course. As part of the intake process, we're gonna have to set some rules. And then the sessions can begin. Okay, yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Raquel, thank you so much. Sure. You're welcome. I don't know what you told them. They think you tried to kill yourself. That you suffer from depression. Can you believe that? What are people gonna think? My son is not crazy. You thank God you're all right. Fentanyl. Fentanyl? What, how could you? What the hell were you thinking? Where did you get it anyway? You have everything. I have given you everything, more than most. Sick of your attitude. This is your father's fault. If he would have been around more, if he would have been tougher on you. We're 
We're gonna get through this. We always do. Okay? I'm gonna do everything I can to make it right, baby. But I need you to do your part too. Okay? You don't know how much I love you. I love you more than you will ever know. And Romero. Now, get into the hip. Marilyn, get your Marilyn Monroe. That's it. Yeah, all right. Rotate. Oh, good. Rotate. Next Ladies one down. down. One. one partner. One partner. Ready? Make yourself comfortable. Thank you. I wanted to take a moment to discuss scheduling. I'm very sorry to say I'm usually extremely busy at work. I totally understand. We can schedule you later in the day or during your lunch if that works better for you. Me? Yes. I would like to have a few sessions with both you and Matt individually. Of course, Shane is our primary focus. How often? Once a week for Shane. Twice a month for both you and Matt. And I think it's important for me to see Amanda as well. If you're willing. Uh, oh, um, you know, I, I'm not sure about that. This is all very overwhelming. I know. He made a mistake, I know. But it's not like there's something mentally wrong with my son. I'm here to help. If there's something I can do to get him back on track, that's my job. That's why I'm here. Look at it that way. You know, I'm gonna be late for a meeting. You said you wanted to meet with Shane. Please. And how long is that gonna take? Not long, just a few minutes. Hi, I'm Raquel. Please sit. Make yourself comfortable. How are you doing today, Shane? During our sessions, there's a few things you need to keep in mind. No phones, no foul language, and no abusive behavior. And the use of headphones is not permitted. I'm here to listen, I'm here to help. So if there's anything in particular that you wanna talk about, whenever or wherever we meet, please go right ahead. Our sessions are confidential. However, I am mandated to report any abusive behavior or any attempts of suicide or harm to anyone else, okay? Do you have any questions, Shane? No, whatever. I got it. Can I go now? Sure. Durante un bonito sueño suena el despertador. 
siempre muy temprano, como la mañana anterior. Lo apago dos o tres veces, aunque tengo que trabajar. En eso llega un aroma y me puedo levantar. You can't have ballroom top and Latin on the bottom. Stop, stop, stop. Are the drugs worn off? You're hurting my eyes. Do I have a stake through my heart? You don't have one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Two hands. Take your partner. Good music tonight. Mm -hmm. Wow, check them out. That's Victor and Amy. So anybody need a ride? I'm parked right over in the parking structure. Oh, we took a ride share, but thank yeah. you. No, I'm right there. Yeah. Oh, great. Okay. Bye, everybody. Bye, 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 bye. Good to bye, see bye. you. Bye. So anyway. Yeah. Hi, Kim. I am so sorry I haven't returned your calls. I totally understand. I really miss you, though. We all do. I'm just not ready. I know. We've been praying for you. Thanks. Did you...? Yes, I got the link, Kim. Thanks. It sounds like you're busy. I'll let you go. Take care. You are loved. Thanks. You too. Kim? Kim? The secret to discovering this life and peace in the midst of the land of grief is to understand what's happening and partner with God in the process. You know, Christ said the sick need a physician, but if we don't recognize or admit that we need healing, we suffer unnecessarily. Hear me, hear my words. It's not weakness to grieve. Don't let your ego lie to you saying you gotta be strong all the time. Even if you've been through loss before, each time it's real and unique. Though the stages are the same. Now the first is the most obvious, denial. And I'm not talking about the river either. Sometimes we just don't want to accept that our loved one is gone and our family is breaking up. 
Now, once we get through that portion, the second stage can even be more challenging. Anger. <laughs> sometimes we're just angry that our spouse or our parent have left us. Worse yet, sometimes we're angry at ourselves, thinking we should have seen the signs or done things differently. Remember what I said about the phone? That's a pretty big book. I guess this pretty much covers it, huh? Thanks. I like what you've done with the place. You into art? Not really. What do you see in that? People with a lot of problems. You do this? A client. Before or after you help them? During. Art can be very therapeutic. I get it, Ms. Cortez. You can call me Raquel. Raquel. <sighs> Please. Sit down. Relax. So what I'm getting at, Raquel, is that you've gone really far away here to fix things. I like to help people, if that's what you mean. I mean yourself. Please sit down. This isn't about me. It's about you. Really? Let's see. You have a daughter? I don't see a husband's picture. I'm guessing an ugly divorce and all the fun that comes with it. You can't get over it. You can't quite figure it out what you did wrong. Probably feel guilty. So you come here and see all these people with the same problem so you can maybe get some kind of answer. You were probably a little wobbly before that. I mean, that's why you all get into this kind of work, right? To keep from wearing a tinfoil hat. Ooh. <laughs> Please move your car. You're parked in a reserved spot. Perdónalos por todo el daño que están causando. Pero ser usted, ellos están haciendo cosas muy malas. Están lastimando a muchas personas. Ay, los odio. Yo sé, Raquel. Pero recuerda que Dios nos juzgará a todos por nuestros actos. Y si guardas odio en tu corazón, hacia el prójimo o a ti misma o incluso con Dios, eso te hará hacer las cosas que ellos mismos están haciendo. ¿Crees que eso es lo que Dios quiere que tú hagas?
Finish your dinner. I'm not hungry. I work very hard to put food on this table. If your father wasn't such a deadbeat, he'd be able to pitch in more. Instead, he creates more expenses and trouble. You do realize I'm gonna be the one paying for most of this so-called therapy he's forced on us. I hate him. I don't ever wanna see him again. Where do you think you're going, mister? I've got lots of homework. Can I be excused, please? Leave your door cracked. Hear me? Yes, ma'am. And basic all the way around. Cross body, there you go. Shadow. Wake up, Raquel. Oh. I know you can do better than that. What's wrong? I'm sorry, just really tough day at work. When you come in here, you have to leave all of that outside. When you're here, you have to be 100% present in the music. Let me lead. Let the music guide you. Put some passion into it and loosen up. Let's try it again. Here we go. A little better. OK, that's all right. Oh, no, no, no. I know you can do better than that. When you hit, bam, let it go down the body, right? With a little more passion. You need to put your heart into it 100%. Okay, think of your boyfriend. I don't have a boyfriend. Okay, think of something you love, anything. I love chocolate. Okay, look into my eyes. Imagine the best piece of chocolate you've ever had, and you want to put your hands all over it. And yo. <laughs> Try it again. Here we go. Ready? And come on. All the way. Yeah. Much better. Look at me. Now, come on. Yeah, that's what you want. There you go. And how long ago was the divorce? Should be finalized soon, sometime next month. And if you don't mind, Mrs. Cameron, if you can give me some background on what you think may have caused it and how you think it impacted your children. The breakup of my marriage. I know it's not an easy thing to talk about, but uh, nothing leaves these four walls. Well, my ex, Matt, well, I guess you know him. He had an affair with one of his students. He made sure she was of age, of course. I am so sorry. There were others and, you know, you might find this funny or really hard to believe, but go on. I still would have stayed with him, but I, I was really worried about the children. Worried how? That they would catch him or? The thought crossed my mind, but no, it was more that he was an irresponsible parent. A really bad example to them. Oh, how so? Gosh, where do I begin? He was way too permissive. He would let them stay up as late as they wanted, would take them to inappropriate movies, miss doctor's appointments. He was just a kid himself. He had no self-control. He was terrible with money. Honestly, if it wasn't for the fact that I do very well for myself, we would have been ruined. The affairs were just the last straw. Oh, and the drinking, of course, just... Wow, that is quite a lot to contend with. It must have been unbearable. If you could remind me, uh, Mrs. Cameron, what do you do for work? Would you mind not calling me that? I've gone back to my maiden name, Spencer. 
I'm terribly sorry, Miss Spencer. I'm a real estate broker. Well, thank you so much for sharing. I really believe this is going to help Shane in the long run. So I'll see you in two weeks? Yes, of course. We have to keep the courts happy. Mm. I will have to call you when I figure out my schedule. Sure, that's fine. And you're to see Shane Friday at 3? Yes. Awesome. Well, he'll be here ever since I got him the car. He's thrilled to drive it any chance he gets. So It's a very nice car. Well, I bought it for him because, well, I thought it would help him feel better about himself. Got it. Bye then. Take care. Here, you have to be 100% present in the music. Let me lead, let the music guide you. Put some passion into it and loosen up. Ecclesiastes 3.1 says, For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. There's a time to weep and a time to laugh, there's a time to mourn and there's a time to dance. You're 40 minutes late. Uh, yeah. Sorry. You know, I understand that this cocky, bad boy outer shell keeps people from getting inside. Wow, that's deep. I know you don't mean to hurt people with your words or your bravado, and that you're really just trying to protect yourself. Inside, you're just a confused child in a world of pain, who's trying to see a way through something he just doesn't understand, and he has no idea what he's doing, and there's no end in sight. Last time we met, you made the assumption that I got into this profession to solve problems I was having in my own personal life. Tough words from someone who's not so tough. None of us are, Shane. No one can do this alone in this world. But let's just say you were right about your assumptions. And I am trying to solve my own problems. I've spent years doing it. I've done years of research. I've seen countless people in your same situation. Don't you think I may have learned something? Aren't you in the least bit curious if I've discovered ways on how to deal with it? Or how others have dealt with it? Wouldn't it help you to understand what it's like when a parent actually loses their daughter to a successful suicide attempt? The unbearable pain it causes. In a way, it's like you're killing more than one person when you do that. I can help you, Shane, but you have to let me in. I'm here to talk to, but no more BS. It has to be real or it's a waste of time. It's really up to you, Shane.
So, how's Shane doing? It's too early to tell. Is he ever going... I mean, will he ever... Seems stable. Sort of. It's gonna take time. Trying to get him to talk about his feelings is really an important step right now. He's a good kid, Raquel. I know he comes off aloof and mean sometimes, but he wasn't always like that. I understand. How's Medusa? That's not nice. Let me guess, I'm an abusive alcoholic pedophile who's destroyed all of their lives. Pretty much, except for the abusive part. Ah, she's slipping. <laughs> and you got the part about the affair with the student? She did say she was of age. The only student I ever had an affair with was her. I was teaching English in Madrid, and I was 25, and she was 20. And she was, I guess you could say naive. A country girl from Alabama. And she came after me like a heat-seeking missile. And we fell in love. We stayed in Spain and Shane was born and then several years later we moved back to the States. She's changed over the years. Although she always had her sights set high and one of the finer things in life. So I put her through real estate school. And as soon as she started doing well, well, she set her sights higher. Higher than a high school teacher, that is. She was the one that had an affair with a con man by the name of Jack Jacobs. Anyway, you know, her reality is a construct of her imagination. And now she's completely destroyed my relationship with my kids. Damn it, who does that? Take it easy, Matt. I'm sorry. Okay, it's okay. Go on. Sometimes I feel like I'm mourning my children's death, even though they're alive and live right down the street. The feeling of rejection is almost unbearable to me. I refuse to give up on them. I will never give up on them. It's a difficult time. I suggest you keep a journal and you jot down every time you call them, reach out to them, or see them, and dig up some pictures of past happy times. Focus more on Shane for now. It'll remind him that there was good in the relationship. But don't send too many. A little will go a long way. Thursday the 12th, work for you? Yeah. How am I... How do you cope? Well, I probably will never get over the pain. But dancing, dancing seems to help. But it could be anything physical that keeps your mind and your body active. Thank you. You're welcome. The cause of death is asphyxiation from hanging. I'm afraid it's suicide, Miss Cortez. I'm very sorry. When we finally accept our loss and we face our anger, we may feel helpless in the rage. You know, some of us have a Silent rage. Others are a bit louder. I happen to be on the loud side. <laughs> no, and it ain't that funny. The most empowering thing that we can do is forgive. Now, forgiveness doesn't always mean somebody's done you wrong or you've done wrong. It actually means in its root to let go. Hmm. You know, if there is anything that we have learn from the teachings of the life and death of Christ, it's forgiveness, right? Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. So forgive your boss for firing you. Forgive your loved ones for leaving you. And most importantly, forgive yourself if you must.
stop any personal condemnation. You could have done this or you could have done that. It's time to loosen the grip and start letting go. You just got here. I'm just, I'm not in the mood. This isn't like that meat market place downtown. Here, it's about the dancing. Why oh, just? This is God's salsa, a mix of diverse ingredients that come together to tantalize the palate. God, I just got myself with that one. Look, Daryl's daughter has cancer. Byron's wife just left him. We're all dealing with something. You come here to smile, to forget. You have to let yourself smile. I am you. What am I going to do with you? Thank you. Okay. Go dance with me. Have some fun. Um, do, do you have any idea? Go ahead, Shane. Ask me anything you like. Do you know, do you know why why she killed herself. I guess I'll never really know for sure. But I do know that there isn't a minute of a day that I don't ask myself the same question and wonder if there was anything I could have done to stop it. If I could have talked to her more talk to her differently, if I could have convinced her that I wasn't the monster that she thought I was or was told I was. I miss her more than I could ever express and I know I will until the day I die. I learned more in the note she left than I ever knew when she was alive. She felt she was always disappointing or upsetting one of us. She said it was uh, too painful for her to always have to turn off half her heart. She became extremely depressed and withdrawn and um, she started to act out. I just, I, I couldn't get through to her. Sound familiar? Every case is different and there are no easy answers. 
One thing is for sure though, talking to someone who's experienced, who cares, and who's been there helps a lot. How old was she? 15. I'm sorry. Some things in life are really hard, but there's always hope. Is that mine? What does it say about me? Not much. You weren't in the hospital very long before you were discharged against the tending physician's recommendation. I wasn't trying to kill myself, you know? Really? Dr. Thomas seems to think so. Have you ever done opioids before? Once. Mostly just do pot. Do your folks know? A little. Not really. Would you say that your parents were involved in a conflictive divorce? You're kidding, right? Of course it was conflictive. They freaking hate each other. And you were stuck in the middle. That is not a pleasant place to be. People are complicated. And then they allow their emotions to get away from them. They lose sight of what's really important. Never really knew to begin with. What was it with you? Let's just say that in a great amount of these cases, it's parental alienation. Parental alienation? Mm -hmm. Sounds about right. I always thought they were from outer space. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, it's when one parent goes on a vigorous campaign to turn their kids against the other parent using any method possible. A lot of lies and character assassination, mostly. I'm really sorry about your daughter, Raquel. Me too. It didn't have to be that way. If we would have talked more, or if um, she knew and believed how much I loved her, Do you really believe in that stuff? I used to. Really? Why? I used to look up to a nun from my school, Sister Esther. In fact, when I was a little girl, I used to want to be a nun because of her. My mom wasn't too happy with that. She eventually started buying me shorter skirts. <laughs> um, when I was 16, I had to leave El Salvador because of the war. I just wanted to see her one last time before I left. Only to find out that um, she'd been transferred to a convent in another country. For days... I prayed and prayed on the bus that I could see her one last time before coming to the U.S. We had to change buses in Mexico City. And I just remember walking through this massive bus station and seeing a bunch of nuns standing there in this waiting area. And I looked carefully to see if she was there, but she wasn't. And then all of a sudden, one of them turned towards me and it was her. I couldn't believe it. What a coincidence. It was a miracle. 
she told me God is good and that he'll always be with me. When I'm sad or lonely, she said that there's going to be moments where I might feel like I've lost sight of him. And that in those moments, that's when he's the closest. Where is he now? Do you have a plan, Shane? What do you mean? It's when you write down how you would do it. It's okay. You're not the only one. Tell me about it. Well, I just wrote that if someone was going to do something like that, well, one was. Yes. It seemed like a like a less violent option, less messy. Yes. Drugs. Dean seemed like the easiest way out. Well, do me a favor. If you think about it again, let's talk about it. Trust me, there are people in this world that love you and would be devastated if you acted on it. So, Thursday? Sure. Oh, and in the meantime, if you want to talk at all, feel free to call me. Thanks, Raquel. Of course. That's what I'm here for. Getting those texts from your dad make you feel? Pretty sure the pictures were your idea. I guess, I guess they made me think. Think about what? But maybe he's not all bad. I mean, I was smiling in the pictures. Well, I suppose no one is all bad. I have something I would like for you to try. What's that? 
Well, it's sort of like an exercise. I would like for you to make a list of all your mother's bad qualities and good qualities and do the same for your dad and for you also. Yeah, I, I don't think I can come up with any good ones for my dad. No one is all bad or all good for that matter. Besides, you were smiling in that picture. I think you'd be really surprised at how it would make you feel. We can discuss it next week. My boy. You remember this place? Yeah. You used to love it when you were a kid. Especially this. <laughs> nice. So, what's up? How you doing? I'm fine. Just, just, just chill out, Dad. Okay. I can't believe your mom let you come here. Yeah, um, she doesn't know. She? Hey, what'd you think of Raquel? She's okay. She the game last night? Total passing game. Dude, Ohani was out of control. Right? This therapy is costing a fortune. Yet another example of your father's irresponsible behavior, wasting time and money. What was that about? He's not. He's not as bad as you say he is! Excuse me! How dare you talk to. Shane. I'm sorry. I guess I'm just stressed. This whole therapy thing is weighing on us all. And to top it off, she wants to see her sister. I just don't think she should be exposed to this at her age. It could mess her up for a long time. Now, I know you and your dad believe that this is a good thing for you, but frankly, I think it's doing a lot more harm than good. Shane. You made a mistake. You do not have mental issues. Just think of what it can do to her. I'm sorry. I just love you and I need you guys. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I love you. I'm sorry, guys. You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Sorry I'm late. Something happened. Positive change doesn't usually happen overnight. Did you do the exercises? I saw my dad. That's great. Huge mistake. Look, thanks and all, but this is not going to work. You'd be surprised. I know you mean well, but I just can't deal with this right now, okay? It's complicated. I get it. You have my number if you want to call me any time.
Look, Jack, I've made up my mind. I'm filing for 100% custody with or without your help. I want him out of their lives. Look, uh, Monica, suing for sole custody could be difficult and costly. I don't care how much it costs. I've had a good year. I'll take a second on the health if I have to. I can't stand it anymore, Jack. I can't stand his interference. It's not good for the kids, and it's certainly not good for me. Well, we'd have to prove that he's not fit. I mean, uh, he was awarded 50% custody, and changing that is not easy. It would be easier if we had something on him. Like what? Well, I, abuse is always good. I mean, it, you know what I mean. So you'll take the case? Well, I'd have to see your financials. For God's sake, Jack. I'm good for it. You'll get it tomorrow. Okay. Hello, this is Raquel. Hi, Raquel. You said you wanted to see Amanda, right? Yes, that would be great. When can she come in? Are you available Friday at 4? Yes. Nice to meet you. Shall we get started? If you don't mind, we'll be done shortly. Oh, of course. Now, you tell Ms. Cortez the complete truth. Okay, Mom. So how are you doing today? Good. And what grade are you in? Fifth grade. Wow, that's great. So I'm going to ask you a few questions as it relates to you and your family, okay? So tell me about your relationship with your brother, Shane. I don't know. He's kind of weird. Sometimes he won't even talk to us. He doesn't even play with me. Oh. And what about your father? What do you think about him? I hate him. Really? Why? He does things that aren't really nice. Well, what kind of things? That's terrible. Can you give me an example of this? I don't know. He just does. Well, how do you know he does? My mom said so. And tell me, what do you feel about your mother? She's the best mom in the world. Hello, this is Raquel. You won't believe what she just did. She's petitioning for 100% custody. Huh, yeah. Based on my supposed abuse of Amanda, how'd you know? Lucky guess. What's the point? I mean, she's already turned them against me. They don't even want to see me. But this will give her 100% legal control as well. The first thing she'll do is end therapy. The dynamic of experiencing loss when you're walking the path with God is that it helps you find the real you. This isn't about a false hope or a uh, telling yourself that, oh, everything is just good and dandy. No. This is about inner transformation and discovery. Title. I changed the brakes and the tires less than two months ago. So you should be good to go. Fantastic. Appreciate it, man. Enjoy. You can't just forget about grief because it's going to show up in some other way. You can't simply distract yourself or even medicate yourself. Regardless how hard you try, eventually, if you don't face it, it is going to face you. You know, like some wise guys I know that didn't get their cut. <laughs>
that just covers what you already owe me. How are you going to pay me for the custody hearing? I'll find a way. I will. Trust me. If I had a dime for every time I heard that... Please. Shoot. All right, I'll do it. It's going to get ugly. She's going to do everything she can to make you into a monster. And her counsel is really good at it. Thank you. I really could have helped him. You have helped him. She's smart, Mark. She knows exactly what buttons to push to make him scared to do anything but to decide in her favor. So she's not only a liar, but she's a really good liar? You'll probably be brought in to testify. I know. Don't let him get under your skin, Raquel. You can do this. You can. Shane, what's up, man? You cutting class too? Come on, man, let's go party. Nah, not feeling it. Just gonna go home. Not feeling it? That's the point. You need a couple of drinks and then you'll be feeling it. At least just give me a ride then. A ride where? Anthony's. Come on, Anthony's? I thought he was in juvie. He's out. He's got some really good stuff, man. We'll blow the back of your head right off. <sighs> what about his parents? Well, his dad's out of town, if you know what I mean. And his mom's working a double shift, so... <laughs> He said to meet him for some sunset action first. He jumped the gate on that apartment building on Venice? Man, it's rooftop party time. All right, I, I, I can give you a ride, but that's it. Okay, all right. Come on, man. Just one drink, one drink. Come hang out, just a bit, just a little bit. Come on. Yeah, come on. <laughs> Look, where Anthony left. Hey, what's up, man? Nice to see you, Bob. Huh? How are you? Oh, I'm doing okay. What's up? Nice view. Yeah, hey, get a drink going. You want one? All right, you want a drink? Yeah, I'll take one. Show me how to help her. I prayed that you would help her. And with Shane, I prayed. And you never showed up. You never showed up. Sorry, Esther. Bueno. Hello. Uh, me llamo uh, Raquel Cortés. Pudiera hablar con Sol Estel, por favor. Hello. Lo siento mucho, señorita Cortés. Sol Estel falleció la semana pasada. Oh. Lo siento. Ella ya está con nuestro Padre Celestial. 
Gracias. I stayed for the game. What game? Sorry, Mom. I thought I told you. When's it over? I hate her so. I was hoping to grab something to eat after. Damn it, Shane. You should have told me this earlier. Sorry, Mom. I'll be more careful next time. It's okay, baby. Just, just be safe. And not too late because you have school tomorrow. Okay. I love you. I love you too. Hell. Better let her dance it off. Get some. Dude, seriously? Relax, okay? I know what I'm doing. Alright, just don't friggin' do it all at once this time, moron. Right. Come on, let's head back to my place. Alright. I'll be right over. Just wanna shake out of you. All right, I'll see you later, man. There's this old story about a man who fell into a deep hole. Well, one person came by, he had a rope. Saw that the man was down there, but the rope wasn't long enough. Then another person came by. He had a ladder, threw the ladder down, but the ladder wasn't tall enough, so the man couldn't climb out. Then finally, this guy came by, heard the man crying and sobbing, and hollered down to him, hey, buddy, I hear you. Let me go get my shovel, and I'll be right back. So he runs off, gets his shovel, comes back, shovel and all, jumps into the hole. Now the guy was crying is yelling, what are you, crazy? Now we're both down here. And the guy looked at him and said, yeah, I know. But I've been here before, and I know the way out. Think of that. I've been here before, and I know the way out.
Raquel. Sorry, I didn't mean to bother you this night. No problem, it's okay. Where are you? I just wanted to thank you. For what? For being at a lighthouse in a storm. For getting it. I'm still here for you, Shane. I haven't gone anywhere. I'm done talking. I'm so tired. Shane, I want you to stop whatever it is you're doing right now. It's nothing that can't wait till tomorrow or the next day. Shane? Shane, I need to talk. No. I understand. But I need to talk. Do this for me. Shane, where are you? Please, don't do anything you can't undo. A day or two won't... Kill me. Why wait? Give me ten minutes. You can do that, can't you? Where are you? Shane! I gotta grab you from here. You're gonna have to be more specific. Where, Shane? Oh, God, please, let me help this young man. Oh, Lord, show me the way, please. Dios quiere que seamos compasivos, misericordiosos, que perdonemos a las personas que nos hacen daño. Vivir de esa forma es vivir en armonía con Dios, en paz y con gozo. No temas, Raquel. Y ten fe. Something's wrong. What? What? Help me. I'm here to help Shane. Everything's gonna be okay. I need to stop it. I can't stop it. I need to stop. I am so sorry you're going through this, but please calm yourself. Did you do the exercises I gave you? And what did you find? Just roughly, the percentage is good and bad. I don't see how they go well. Please try. Please. <laughs> Mom was 80% good. Dad, 70% bad. And I am 95% bad. I see. I don't. It just makes me feel like crap. I know. Please bear with me. You trust me, right? No matter how skewed your percentages are, they're off, Shane. Shane, you gotta focus on the good. That's the starting point. Do you really believe you're 95% bad? I sure don't. I don't think anybody would. This is so Shane. I understand. I felt the same way. But I've learned something. Tonight, with your help, I've learned. What? I guess it's something I should have known all along, but sometimes you're so deep in the dark hole that you need somebody else to shine the light or bring a shovel. I feel like I'm getting crushed under the weight. God, this is not my fault. It's not, Shane, it's not. Your percentages are way off. Shane, the point of the exercise was to show you that not everyone is all bad or all good. 
It all starts with forgiving. When you can forgive the people who you believe have hurt you the most, and most importantly, yourself. No one's perfect, Shane. And there's blame to go all around. You do not need to take all the blame. It is not your fault, Shane. It's not your fault. That goes for you too. Yeah, it goes for me too. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Shane. Thank you for being here. Hello? Hello, Miss Spencer. Raquel here. Oh, hi. How are you? Fine. I'm sorry to bother you. I just wanted to schedule an appointment with you. Oh, I see. Um, well, things have, well, they've changed. I'm not sure if you know, but I'm in the process of petitioning for... I know. Um, I think it's really important I speak with you. I really don't see the point. In fact, I never have. Particularly when I found out... Found out what? When I googled you. And found out what happened. I was shocked that you couldn't even save your own daughter. But I can help, Shane. I need to discuss with you what I discovered when Amanda came. Please, it's really quite important. Oh, I see. Sure, no problem. I could swing by this afternoon if that works for you. So please, tell me what's going on with my darlings. You have me worried. There's a parent-child relational problem that really complicates and worsens an already traumatic event for the children. The breakup of the family unit, divorce. <sighs> Raquel, when a parent deliberately turns the children against the other parent, Miss Cortez. When a child is alienated from their sense of security, he or she loses all emotional stability. They will spin out of control and self-regulate through their peers, drugs, and or alcohol, etc. With all due respect, I came here to talk about my children, my case, not some hypothetical. I am actually talking about your case, Miss Spencer. Oh, I see. You're talking about Matt. Wow, this the whole thing just is starting to make so much sense to me. It is not their father. Really? Is that what you believe? The courts don't look kindly on a parent who coaches their children into lying about abuse. You can't prove that. No, but I can and I will testify to what my professional findings and conclusions are. Go ahead. Winning 100% custody is not really winning at all. I suppose you have convinced yourself that it is for the good of the children. When the truth is that you are mad at Matt and you want to get back at him. You feel like a victim and you want revenge. Are you finished? I know you love your children. Think about what this is doing to them. If not now, five years from now or 20, when they reassess and see it from an adult perspective, it can and does often happen. When they realize that Matt is not the monster that you have made him out to be, what do you think they're going to think of you? There is no easy solution to this all. The only thing you can do is to start the healing process now. Compromise. Work it out. Especially for your children. They really do need both parents. Please. 
I'll see you in court. Petition for 100% custody is denied. That was so much fun. Yeah. Happy birthday, Grandma Missy. <laughs> Happy birthday to Yeah, I miss you. Grandma Missy. I miss Grandma too. Grandma Go to your room. Now! You know I love you, Mom. You know I do. You don't know what love is. I love you, but he's not that bad. Not as bad as you say. <laughs> no one's perfect, Mom. Not even you. Oh my God. What's gotten into you? Can't you see he's trying to manipulate you? He's a weak man trying to sink his claws into you. Stop, Mom. What did you say to me? Just please chill out. You are just like him. I thought I could save you, but it's just no use. The same cocky loser attitude. I love you, Mom. No. And I love Dad. I love you both. You will never amount to anything just like him. He never says anything bad about you. Go and live with him then. No problem. Get out of my house! Now! Keys. Love you, Amanda. You made your choice, now go! Esta situación extraña y muy de repente Hace unas semanas todo era normal Pero ahora hey, buddy. todo es diferente Dude, your place is sick What do you think? Nice, love it <laughs> Look gonna be okay, all right? I promise. She's your mom. She loves you. You guys will work it out. All right? You wanna watch the game? It comes on in five minutes. And pizza's on the way. <laughs> Whoa! All right. Thomas Merton, a famous Trappist monk once said, I see, I'm not as dumb as I look, all right? <laughs> He said, the more you try to avoid suffering, the more you suffer. Because smaller and more insignificant things begin to torture you in proportion to your fear of being hurt. Now, if you can imagine it, God is closer than your own breath. He's where your pain and reality intersect. Now, you're either going to be the one who needs to admit you need help and healing, or you're the one who needs to help and show the way of healing. You know, the guy with the shovel. The way it works best is if you realize you're both. Our wholeness isn't based on avoiding pain, but embracing it into everlasting, abundant life. Amen? See you. So glad you're here. God bless you. It's been a long journey, huh? Hey, Raquel. Oh. Would you believe there's another walk-in? You feel up to uh, seeing him? Sure. Send him in. Okay. Hey. Hi, Shane. Sorry for just showing up and all. It's okay. How are you? Good. Well, much better anyway. Amanda still wants a dad, but baby steps, right? No, 
All you and your dad can do is keep trying. Let her know that you're out here and show her love any way you can. I'm heading off to college soon, so I just wanted to say goodbye. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for all you've done. Pleasure, Shane. Thank you. So, wow, off to college. Yeah. <laughs> Hard to believe. <laughs> You're going to do great. Yeah. You know you can still call me anytime. Well. Thank you. You know, you never became a nun, but you're an angel. He was always with you. And with you. You must have seen that same commercial. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I've taken a couple of beginner classes. I'm not bad. Great. Good for you. Look, Raquel, words could never express. It's what we do. Can I dance? Hmm. <laughs>